Happy Monday. How you doing? Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Do you believe that? I believe that. With all my heart. Hey, today is Blessing Monday. Monday's the day that we call just to get our weekly blessing. A lot of people do. Phone rings all day. Pastor Jim, I want my weekly blessing. Amen. I want you to be blessed. I insist that you be blessed. And the reason I insist that you be blessed is because nothing else matters but the blessing. Nothing else matters but the blessing. Amen. I insist that all of God's people Walk around with the blessing of Abraham upon them. Amen. Glory to God. We can make that happen. Let's look at something in Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at something in Galatians chapter 3. Why nothing else matters. Why nothing else matters but the blessing. And I'm telling you what, folks. When you've got that blessing upon you, nothing else matters. Nothing matters. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. So that. Christ has redeemed us so we can be blessed. Now that's redemption, folks. Remember when Jesus went to the cross, he said, it is finished. What in the world was he talking about when he said it is finished? He was talking about redemption. He came here to redeem us, to buy us back to purchase us with his blood. And that's not all he did. That's not all he did. But that's what a lot of people believe, that that's it. Millions of people every week preach about the blood of Jesus redeeming us from sin. And that's a wonderful, wonderful subject. But that is only part of it. That's only part of it. We are redeemed so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. So that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. Now that's the reason Jesus redeemed. It tells us right there. Because nothing else matters. Hey, we had a wonderful, wonderful praise report last week. A lady who was diagnosed with a mass on her pancreas three weeks ago called me Thursday and said the doctors told her there was nothing but scar tissue on her pancreas. Do you know why? That tumor that was a was grabbing a hold of her pancreas, was burned off. How in the world that happened, I don't even pretend to know. But I'll tell you what, it did through the power in the name of Jesus. That's what did it. You want to talk about power? Now, these people are blessed. Healing is part of redemption. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. And let me tell you, folks, if you're, if, you're, if you're redeemed from sickness, you should not be sick. You should not be sick. Somebody in church yesterday was overheard saying, in my own church, was overheard saying, I don't care what anybody says, God doesn't always heal.
you know what? There's nothing we can do for that person. There's nothing we can do for that person. Who would say that? Because they, they have come to terms with their illness. Let me tell you something, folks. What you come to terms with and what you tolerate with, you will live with until you die. Until you decide that you're not going to have it. Say, I'm not half. Around here, the first time somebody shows a symptom, we say we're not having it. We don't accept it. We don't tolerate it. Amen? I believe God wants to heal every single solitary time. And you could beat me with a baseball bat and I would not change my mind on that. Because that's God's word. Why in the world would Jesus take 39 stripes on his back if it was not always God's will to heal? Why did Jesus heal them all? He healed them all. Because that's the second part of redemption. The first part being the fact that God made Jesus the sacrifice for our sin. That's number one. Number two is the fact that by the stripes of Jesus, we were here. Doesn't it say sometimes, maybe, might be, could be. No, we were healed by the stripes of Jesus. What you will tolerate in your life, you will live with. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil fool you into, into having that. These awful, filthy, rotten, stinking diseases. Jesus healed all who were oppressed. Sickness is oppression of the devil. And if you will allow that in your body, there's nothing I can do for you. But the minute you say, I'm not having it, you call me. And I'll get rid of it. That woman, bless her heart up there in Chicago. They did not accept it. They would not accept it, her and her husband. They would not have it. These are true people of God. These are people to be honored, to be cherished. These are people who know God's word. They really know what God said. They wouldn't accept it. They wouldn't accept it. It's gone. Glory to God. Everybody who went to Jesus for healing, the woman with the issue of blood, she wouldn't accept it. She wouldn't accept it. Stop accepting sickness. Don't accept this. Don't accept it or you will live with it. Amen. So many people. Well, it might not be God's will. Yeah. Stop accepting this evil and sickness is evil. Not the people, but the disease. Jesus healed all who were oppressed. It tells us in Matthew chapter 8 that he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Cast the devil out of all these sick people, it tells us in there. Read Matthew chapter 8. When the evening came, they brought to him everybody that was sick. He cast out the devils. He cast out a, a spirit of blindness from a blind person and they could see. I've done that. We had a woman come to our event over in Orlando and I mean stone cold blind. She couldn't tell you if it was night or day. She would not accept her blindness. She came in that, play, in that meeting room that night at that hotel. Big meeting room. And she 
expected God to heal her because she refused to accept sickness. Refused to accept. Refused to stay blind for the rest of her life. She got healed. In two minutes, that woman's eyes were wide open. If you want, I will send you her picture. I have a picture of her after she was healed. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Her blind cane, the white cane they carry, is in the background. She don't need it no more. Another man in Wisconsin, before, when we were still up there, came to our church for, I don't know, six months, a year. I'm not sure how long. We had a little church up there. And then he moved away. And a year later, he came into, pulled, his van pulled onto our, our lot. His wife got out, went around, brought him in. He was blind. I said, what happened? He said, I had a heart attack. And when they were doing surgery on me, I had a stroke. And everything's okay now, except I can't see. I've been blind for six months. I said, well, what do you want? He <clears throat> turned toward my direction. He said, I came here because I want to see. He had watched miracles in our church. Miracles follow me, folks. They follow me. <clears throat> we got a book coming out about it, which will be available to you in about a week or two. I'll show it to you. This man is featured in there. He said, I came here because I want to see. I put my, I reached across the desk, put my hand over his eyes. I said, in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. Nothing happened. I said, you're all set. Go on home. He got up. They left. Three days later, here comes the van. This time he's driving. He gets out of the van, walks into my office, picks up a newspaper on my desk and reads it. He isn't even wearing glasses. I said, what happened? He said, well, I went home. I was still blind. Blind the next day, blind the day after that. He said, I got up the third day and I could see. The healing power of God had gone into his eyes and healed him. <clears throat> Another person I prayed for over the phone, spoke over, young boy, blind. His eyes opened, took 30 days. 30 days later, that young boy all of a sudden went, and his eyes opened. The healing power goes into you the minute I say be healed in the name of Jesus. I have been anointed to do that for 30 years, folks. Thousands of people have been healed. My question to you is, who's next? We also get finances healed. F Poverty is financial sickness. And God will heal that just as quick as he will heal physical sickness. Amen. Do not tolerate sickness and poverty. People call me. I have had, I, I had a list of praise reports last th last Thursday I got seven financial praise reports I say glory to God and then also late Thursday night came the call about the pancreatic cancer being healed we've had other cases of pancreatic cancer being healed that wasn't the first one folks this healing is routine for us I tell people this is a big deal to you but it's routine for me Healing was routine for Jesus. Healing was routine for Peter. It was routine for Paul. It was re routine for, for Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne and those people. Healing should be ru routine. I'm out of time. Don't forget today's blessing day, especially when you do, when you do your offerings and donations today. You call me because I want to speak the blessing over you. Amen. Make it a great day. You call me today if you're sick or if you're broke and we'll... We'll heal your finances and we'll get your body healed too. Amen. Have a wonderful day. I love you very much.